Man, it's an interesting time in the world. We've got people riding on their skateboards with the Vision Pro or having Chinese buffet like Knupsi uh, with the Vision Pro itself. And honestly, Knupsi, really? Did it taste that good with the Vision Pro? Anyway, besides that. And then we have the Quest 3 where you can dance around your home, be like a crazy maniac and be at peace. But the main question here is, which device would you pick or rather yet, which is actually better? Is it the $3,500 Vision Pro? or is it the $500 Quest 3? That is what I'm here to help you decide. So let's start off with the very first aspect of both devices, the hardware. Now, Apple has designed something that is truly unique. My, besides the fact that it looks like a pair of ski goggles, it's got a really nice build, and I think they spent a good amount of time with the hardware. Think about it, you've got an M2 chip built in, R1 chip built in, those are expensive processors. Design-wise, there are a ton of cameras. I mean, the fact that it does eye tracking, really impressive. Uh, you also have a scanner there to scan to unlock your device. You've got cameras outside for the pinch and zoom. There's a lot of components to make this device worth it. Then the build itself, premium materials, you've got magnetic, you know, latches for different things. You've got also the loop design, which we'll get to when it comes to comfort, dual loop and single loop. So hardware is great. You've got speakers as well for spatial audio, but the battery's outside. This is the most on Apple thing ever. Seriously, because first of all, actually maybe not, because this is a 3166 milliamp battery that is external. This is a battery that charges via USB type C, but it's connected by a giant lightning cable. Go figure, right? So, which means you're thinking, oh, I can dual swap it. Nah, you can't, because there's no built-in battery here. So, which means you either have to charge it with another battery pack or connect it, or you just have to stop wherever you are. So, that's, that's the design element here. And you can see how good it looks, but also how different and maybe un, unwise it might be. Now, the Quest 3. Honestly, it looks like a toy. Not as bad as the Quest 2 but it feels more like a gaming device or something that you would use uh, to play. You've got plastic build, you've got the cameras in front, a USB on the side, running the Snapdragon XR2 Gen 2 chipset, pretty nice. Um, and then you've got the straps, very different from what Apple has. We'll get to, into that in comfort. But the other thing about these two devices is their displays. Meta says they have equivalent of 4K+, plus. And then Apple says it's better than the 4K TV. I mean, no, there's some actual numbers here and there, but I'll tell you this. Yes, the Vision Pro is much clearer and sharper than the Quest. It's just what it is. And you guys will see it when I actually do the recordings. Now, on design elements, yes. Vision Pro wins. It's, it's a well-built device. It's solid, it's premium. But when it comes to design aesthetics for usability, I give that to the Quest. And you're saying, hey, Thunder E, you're picking and choosing. That's life. That's literally what it is. Now, let's talk about comfort. This is the main part of using a VR, AR headset. Ideally, I would love to use a headset like my Meta Ray-Bans, and that would do everything for me. Or even something like the x glasses, which I've used on a couple of occasions. And honestly, that was my perfect use scenario. But still, we've got the Vision Pro. And the Vision Pro has a couple of things for that comfort that bear into mind. One that I haven't talked about much that doesn't bother me, but just annoys me. It's just that you have a cable running. You know, you have to be mindful of that. That's something you make sure that the battery pack is in your pocket, in your back pocket, in your sweatshirt, whatever the thing is. Then you also have the loops. Apple, when you get the device, it comes with a single loop uh, band. Very easy to swap out. If you pull a tab, that's it, done. It's nice, it's aesthetically beautiful, but it's not comfortable. <laughs> it definitely is not comfortable. I mean, the first five minutes of use, actually, honestly, the first two minutes of use, I was, it was, it was painful. I would say I could use it for about 30 minutes if I really wanted to push it, but that's about it. Now, the dual loop uh, band, much more comfortable, but I still think it has a side effect because 
the overhead band goes across from say your left ear to your right ear rather from the front of the headset to the back which will alleviate more of that facial tension which is what you get with the apple vision pro on the other hand we've got good old trusty typical standard vr headbands and what i like about this is that the headband goes from the front to the back and then it also splits to the back so it reduces the surface area that there's a lot of tension in it. It's a much more comfortable headband to wear, like so. Easy to put on, very simple, feels really comfortable. Well, of course, the Vision Pro. With the dual loop, can wear it and use it, but it's not as comfortable. And I think that is a big thing. Now, I know I have some friends who say, the bands work well, the single loop works well for them, it's fine. But when it comes to comfort for something you'll be using for at least two hours with your Vision Pro battery, you wanna be comfortable. And I think the Quest just simply wins in that category. Software. This is where Apple usually excels and does a lot of great things in. And let's go in and take a quick look. With the Vision Pro, when you put it on, it lights up, scans your eyes, gets you in, Tells you to align the headset, move it up. Yes, I'm in. And then you see this very interesting landscape where you can actually have depth distance. So because of the depth sensor, I know that the distance between my eye and where everything is, is roughly around six feet. I love that. It's, it's really nice. Plus it gives you this landscape where you can see things immediately in front of you. So, You've got something very familiar with the Apple apps and also feels like an iPad app gallery. And I think that comfort is really nice because it's, it's, very, it's very natural, at least for a lot of people. The Apple ecosystem does a really good job at giving you something that makes you feel like, I know where it is, I've seen an iPhone, I've seen an iPad, and that ease of use is great. Plus the pinching and, zoom and, and moving around is, is nice. So if I open up an application, I can really look at it and then move it around. Very smooth software and I think that works really well. On the side note though, the screen is probably just all greasy right now because my hand's all over it. Then software wise, we have the Quest. We jump into the Quest and we have something that is simple but also familiar and also um, dated, if you will. You've got a bar in front of you here, and I can go ahead and go into my library, and I have all the apps in front of me uh, that I can access. It feels very traditional, and there's nothing wrong with that, but it doesn't add you to a future scape. Now, you also have uh, pinch uh, and pinch navigation, if you will. Uh, it's more software-based because they don't have as much sensors, but it works fairly well. The one thing I do like with the Quest though is, uh, compared to the Vision Pro, is if you want to go back, say, to your home screen from any app, on the Vision Pro, you do have to go ahead and tap on the, uh, the crown, or you look up and go to the control center. While with the Quest 3, you hold your hands out, and the camera sees your hands, and you see the Meta logo, and you just tap it, and it just takes you home. That's a very simple, experience there but it still feels dated it doesn't feel as as clean and what apple has but it still functions really well now the software experiences of both of them have added features which i forgot to mention the first time i actually recorded this video you have the ability to uh, mirror your your macbook to your vision pro and use multiple screens and have that very giant experience there which is great you can also do that on the Quest 3 as well with uh, an app which you can download either your Mac or your PC and have that same giant experience. I think the Vision Pro is a little bit more robust just because it allows you to have multiple um, home screens while the Quest allows you to have one giant home screen and other applications running at the same time. But again, similar experiences giving you uh, a very different look at what the software can bring uh, for them. Vision Pro software, cleaner, but Quest, I think, is pretty solid. Plus, you do have Instagram. You can go on Instagram on there. And there's no Instagram on the Vision Pro yet, I know. Now, speaking of applications, that brings us to uh, the kind of apps you find available. Now, with the Vision Pro, the Apple says there are 600 apps at launch. And those apps are a mixture of the iPad apps as well as also Vision Pro apps as well. Now, you're not going to find every single application you're looking for just yet. And I think, to be fair, I have to be patient. It's only been three days. So 
I should not complain. Uh, but in terms of apps that totally fully take advantage of the Vision Pro, there are not a lot that do that yet. I think one of them is the extension experience, which is fun and shows you what it can do with a dinosaur walking in, butterfly. You get the, get the idea of like, okay, yes, I can be in a virtual world. I can be in a mixed reality world at the same time. Then you go over to the Quest 3, which has a, lot, a ton of apps. There's games and apps galore, and they are like $29.99 each. They should be cheaper. I'm just saying, it's a lot of money I spent on making this video, <laughs> besides buying the Vision Pro. <laughs> that being said, they, the, there are a ton of apps, and they are apps for every kind of scenario, whether it's a virtual reality app, mixed reality app, uh, whether it's things like Instagram or even going on Facebook, WhatsApp, those are the kind of things that are built in. It's a very rich ecosystem for applications, but we definitely know that Apple will get there. It's just going to take them some time. So you get the idea of where they land. And right now in terms of application, the Quest has more apps for now. Gamers, you've been waiting for this section. It's finally here. How is the gaming experience? Now I have done a gaming video on the Vision Pro. Go check that out. But I wanted to see how they match, at least for now. We know that the Vision Pro, as I mentioned, doesn't have as lot many apps right now, but what can you experience on the Vision Pro? So there's some Vision Pro specific gaming apps. And I think the best one is still Synth Raider. Uh, it's an app that's available both on the Vision Pro and the Quest 3. And it's an augmented reality app that it's basically, you know, a dance rhythm app and it's fun. You see me goofing around, put your steps in. You can learn how to dance with that too maybe a little bit, but you get the full idea with this. And I think that's just kind of the vision of where apps will go from there. There's also an app called What, what the Golf. I really like it because you can walk around the golf course and see what you want to do, move the app around. It's fun. It's simple, it's fun. And then you can jump into iPad apps like uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. There is PUBG New State. I tried to use it, it didn't work. I'm gonna try it again, so if it works, you'll see in this video. If it doesn't, you're gonna see my face, so one of the two. Um, but there are apps like that. Now, it's not a lot, so what are the other options? Xbox Game Pass, for instance. There's no app yet, and traditionally, you can use the browser, but in this case, because you cannot pin it to your home screen, you cannot use Xbox Game Pass. That's just what it is for now. So the only available option is Steam Link, and Steam Link actually works well. Connected to my PC upstairs, and you're wondering, you know what, you could play on a TV, you've got 65 inch, 77, but I don't have a 200 inch display, and that is what you get in this environment. I can go super large, playing Street Fighter, having a good time, enjoying the gameplay experience, and I think that is something that's to be cherished. Not something you necessarily need, but you definitely get the idea. And then we move over to the Quest 3. Games galore. There are a ton of games everywhere. Games like Bulletstorm, um, and also games like Creed, that take you into VR environment. Some games take you into AR environment, like, of course, uh, Synth Raider. So whatever game you're looking for, you will find in terms of just the environments and feel. And I think that's what the Quest really brings to the table. It, because Oculus started for, as a gaming VR headset. So you, you're gonna have that kind of pedigree there. Plus you do have the ability to connect to Xbox Game Pass, which is also available. And you can do that in a virtual environment or a physical environment as well. So mixed reality, as well as also Steam Link. So I can do the same thing, play my, my games there. And when it comes to gaming, it's just really clear. It's the Quest 3. Right now, the Vision Pro is not there yet, but it will get there, I think, at some point. But I think the downside to that is that having physical buttons and controls adds much more of a tactile element to that gaming experience that you're just not gonna get on the uh, Vision Pro, unless you use an Xbox controller, but that's not tactile, it's just you hidden buttons, and that's pretty much it, so Quest 3. Now, this is the part of the video where I tell you, yes, you should buy the Vision Pro. It's $3,500, it doesn't matter. Life is good, taxes are low, but that's not really the case. And this is also the part of the video where I should say, well, you know what, save money, buy the Quest 3, 500 bucks, you can find it somewhere. Nah, that's not really the case either, because I'm not gonna tell you any of those. I think what we need to really look at is where these devices stand and what they bring to the table. Start off with the Quest 3. It's $500, which means at some point this year, we'll get cheaper. And also at some point this year, we'll get a Quest 4. But what the Quest 3 brings to the table 
is an experience where you can game and enter into a VR or AR world in a very smooth fashion that allows you to enjoy games differently, whether it's in VR or AR, or even just sitting down and playing an Xbox game. And the fact that it's compact and portable really adds to that element. So I think there's a lot of great things to see there. And then we look at the Vision Pro and we go, well, it's $3,500. And they're not a lot of games, but we know it's Apple, so there's gonna be games coming in. Well, what's the difference with that experience? I think the best way to look at it is the way my wife explained it to me, because I was even having a hard time myself. And I said, you know, this is what it brings to the table. These are the specs, this is what it does. And she said, well, you've got a M2 MacBook on your head, which means you can do a lot with it. Now it's got, it's got better displays. It's really, really captivating, and especially when you turn on the scenes or the different landscapes as app, environments Apple likes to call it. Basically, you go into a virtual world that you can't walk around in yet. But when you turn it on, and I like to go to the moon, it really sets the stage for something different. And, then, and that brings the possibility. And right now with the Vision Pro, there are tons of possibilities. Uh, because of that M2 chip, because of that 4K display, because of spatial audio. When you move around your uh, persona in a conversation, I didn't even talk about that, uh, during FaceTime, the sound moves around with you. And that is really cool. Now, personas are also really weird. That doesn't really look like me. I called my wife and she said, take that off. I need my husband back. You get the idea. Danny looked like a character from Dynasty Warriors in PS2. Very bad. And some people look great. So, you know, it picks and chooses. But you get the idea that there's so much more this thing can do. And that's not discounting the Quest 3 because the Quest 3 is doing a lot right now. And what this tells me is that we're at a time where input methods and computing are gonna change. Our cell phones are still gonna be there. Our laptops will be there. But this will advance in an area where eventually, hopefully, I can put on just like my metal ray bands and I'm in that world. I have an AR environment or I have something that just looks like a pair of ski goggles, like thin ones, and I'm still in the environment I want to be in. But Apple has come in and Apple has now excited the industry. And that's just something that always happens with Apple. It means that Meta will make a better device. It means that the Quest 4 might be so much more comparable at a cheaper price point for people who want that. And it also means that Apple will have to come back with something that's cheaper and still better. And then maybe Google comes back with Google Glass. I doubt it, but that possibility is there. We know that uh, Microsoft has something, you know, which has been more commercial with a HoloLens. Maybe that gets better. Maybe Samsung does something like, you know, uh, Galaxy View, or what did Danny call it? Uh, Never mind. You get the idea. You understand that this is going to change the industry. And even though I made fun of everyone at the beginning of the video, walking around with, you know, uh, Vision Pro everywhere, that's going to be part of the norm moving forward, but better versions, hopefully better versions. So to end this video, who's better? Who wins? Well, that's up to your wallet, really. So. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think the Quest 3 is the better device here? Do you think the Vision Pro clearly is that device? Leave your thoughts down below. Enjoy the bloopers at the end because they're a ton and always enjoy your entertainment. It's a very interesting time. <laughs> or there are people at home who are playing around with themselves. Scratch that. <laughs> Makes it easier for me to put it on. And Oh, I just forgot this is Hayato's <laughs> size. <in. laughs> God, my dishwasher. <laughs> we have something that promises. <laughs> I can see why some people will justify Ooh, that $3,500 price point. To be fair, we have noise in the background. Maybe Microsoft does something. God dang it. <laughs> Guys, it's cold outside. It's cold. <laughs> Seriously, like people are making noise everywhere. Start that again. <laughs> Three, two, one, go.